out of all the symbols that exist, um, this is, this is uh, not my own saying, but uh, these are uh, these five are <coughs> what uh, experts of uh, cultural studies argue to be the most important elements that you must know in understanding a new culture. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go uh, through <clears throat> these five in order. Uh, about Korean culture, okay? So, okay. so the first is symbols, and I think we came to this understanding that uh, the first one that we could uh, talk about is Taeguk. Uh, did we sort of go through the list of what uh, are the most important cultural symbols are? Okay, so let's do more uh, guessing, uh, or thinking, <laughs> or thinking. Um, what do you think are the most important cultural symbols? Hmm? Yeah, this, <laughs> very good. Sometimes the most obvious answer is the best answer, seriously. Okay? So don't be shy about stating the obvious sometimes. Because okay? it starts, it gets, all, it, it gets us rolling. Okay? So it's always good. Anyone else? Yes? National flower. Which is? In Korean? Mugungwa. Yes. Yes, tiger. And I have a lot of uh, visual images to Please your eyes. National song. I think we weren't quite sure whether a national song or anthem or arirang can be a symbol. What do you guys think? Yes. Uh, symbol has to represent something, right? So what does that represent? Yes. I think, again, I, when I asked you, it was not because I disagreed. It's, it's a matter of uh, sort of prompting you to think, okay? So, you see, I think she made a good point uh, of how, you see, we tend to think of symbols just visually, right? Uh, but symbols, do they have to be visual? Not necessarily. So, uh, you could think about this, uh, not necessarily uh, agreeing or disagreeing, uh, but anyway, anyone else with a comment? Yes. Maybe mm. they, any Korean could sing the song, because they didn't decide to be a even they are not from South Korea. I think that the symbol for the Korean race or ethnic ethnicity mm. more than the South Korean. Definitely, uh, when Koreans sing their national anthem, as you do for singing your own anthem uh, back home, uh, I think it sort of reminds of your identity, right? It uh, sort of reinforces the sense of belonging, right? Uh, so I think it's a, it's a good example. Anyone else? Yes. Han. Yeah, I think if we accept national anthem as a symbol of Korea, uh, Arida is definitely uh, one of those because it's a sad song, right? Uh, and it does reflect the deep-seated sadness that a lot of Koreans feel. Uh, so if you're interested in one of the most uh, sort of important concepts that capture the the mindset of Koreans. It's Han. H-A-N. And, uh, I mean, sort of a trivial example is this. 
when I watch, let's say, Hollywood movies or American television dramas or uh, crime investigation shows, you know there are many scenes where actors have to cry? And I can just see how difficult time they have trying to, you know, jerk out tears, right? Uh, because typically Americans are happy-going people. They don't really have this hun. But you give any Korean a, a scene where they have to cry, my God, they're the best criers in the world. Why? Hun. Okay? Uh, and I think uh, even young people today, you know, maybe it's because uh, they had to study hard all the time, not having had enough time for themselves to enjoy. Just crying is just a sort of a second nature to <laughs> Koreans. I mean, I think, again, I told you it's sort of a trivial example, right? But uh, even this casual observation, you can see how I think a lot of people are, in, in many ways, I'm, I'm talking about Koreans, uh, who have, you know, who may have developed this sort of sense of sadness, okay? Um, anyway, good. Anyone else with uh, symbols of Korea, cultural symbols? Dangun. Wow. Um, I think, uh, yeah, Dangun. <laughs> Uh, because uh, we believe that we are descendants of this uh, mythical figure, uh, Tangun. Uh, we're all descendants, uh, and we like to believe that we're all like the descendants of the same common ancestor, right? So that's why we have this fixation on sort of a same sort of a bloodline uh, sort of <coughs> descendants. Um, Anyway, good. Anyone else? La yeah? I think that kimchi would be a symbol of Korean culture. Uh, it is definitely a cultural symbol of Korea, but does it have a meaning? Maybe Korean determination to survive? <laughs> 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 kimchi has that meaning? <laughs> Man, I've been eating kimchi every day without really thinking how important that was. Um, I think... It is definitely a, an important symbol, sort of associated with Korean diet, but I don't think it sort of represents any meaning, right? Uh, but a good one. Yes. See, I think somebody else mentioned this. How up to the 1950s, you know, if you if you look at uh, old photos uh, that American soldiers took of Korea, like you know, before the war and maybe even during the war. Typical Korean, or uh, humble, okay? Not the fancy style, I'm talking about white, okay? And, you know, I told you about the white nation building, state building. You see, some Korean scholars have made this sort of Korean tendency to wear white as something representing Korean's love for peace. <laughs> you know, I laugh at it because, you know, when, as a state, as a nation, as a country, loving peace is, n is not the way to go sometimes. You gotta fight, right? But we've been invaded so many times and we weren't able to resist. Why? To be brutally honest, we just had too many corrupt elite who were just, you know, to their own family, their clan, not thinking about the country, right? We do have that painful memory, right? But in the process of nation building, you don't focus on negatives. You always try to focus on positive aspects. And what did we find? Oh, we wore this white cloth because we love peace. Okay? But uh, if you look at the other side of this, Maybe at the time, we didn't have enough dye <laughs> to dye our clothes. I'm just joking. Uh, but anyway, uh, last call. Two hands, yes. Uh, 
Uh, you guys know, uh, I, Yi Sun, General Sun Chin Lee. Yi Sun Shin. He was um, a central figure uh, with a much smaller uh, sort of manpower and a number of ships was able to defeat uh, the much more powerful and, uh, you know, uh, Japanese uh, uh, naval uh, attack on Korea during the Hideyoshi invasion. Was, was that in the 1500s? 1592. Mm -hmm. Uh, the war really de de devastated uh, the country, uh, but he was that one brave general who really uh, fought to his uh, last last breath. You see, I'll tell you one more thing about this nation building. What is the famous saying that General Lee said as he was dying? Now, we all, I mean, I almost cried when I read that when I was a little child. But when I got older, I said to myself, what crazy general would say, tell the enemy that I'm dead. You see, uh, you know how in battles, flag bearer has to commit his life to protecting the flag, why? It gives the soldiers the courage to fight. Now, when the the captain or the person who is leading the, 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 the battle dies. It is the last thing to tell the enemy. So he said something very obvious, you see, right? He didn't say anything special, but we made it special because of nation building, you see. Um, anyway, uh, generally, uh, yes, he symbolizes, you know, the, the courage right, uh, of, uh, let's say, Koreans, <laughs> uh, maybe Korean soldiers, uh, who are, you know, very courageous in uh, protecting their country. Yes, so last hand over there, oh yes. Korean alphabet. It is definitely symbolic of Korean culture, but what does it represent anything? Like meaning? I think it symbolizes the uh, uniqueness kind of Korean language because before it was, it was being written with like Chinese characters. Yes. And it was created like for the people, for the Korean people so that they can express themselves. So, I think that's uh, another sort of a nation building. Um, anyway, something to think about, alright? Uh, yes. Religion. You gotta be more spe specific. Christianity is represented by symbolically the cross, right? And what's uh, the other major religion of Korea? Buddhism. So swastika. Okay. So something about swastika is. You know, it's, it's been in use. Uh, we, think, we tend to associate uh, swastika with uh, uh, Eastern religions and Nazism, right? But it's been in use in practically, not practically, but in many, many cultures since the Neolithic era, which uh, began uh, in the 11,000 BC, okay? Or BCE, before Common Era. Okay, uh, so, uh, oh yeah, did you know that the book is out now? The textbook is in the bookstore, okay? Um, how many of you got gotten a, gotten a chance to purchase it? Not too many, right? It's, anyway, it's in the bookstore. Very nice cover, at least. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, yeah. Good question. Shamanism is a very important religion for Koreans. 
Is there a, a symbol that is associated with shamanism? Someone who guesses this right? Maxim Khan. Because there is. They pile up stones. Uh, I think it is shamanistic, but it's not a, like a shamanistic symbol. That I'm the, the symbol that I'm looking for. Totem is a it's a, a symbol associated with shamanism, but not the, the type, not the one that I'm looking for. Yes. The shrine. Shrine. This is the shrine. I don't know what uh, symbol you're referring to. Like the physical shrine. Physical not. shrine. Even so, <laughs> I don't know what that physical shrine looks like. Um, anyway, anyone else? Am I just? Having you guys think too much in the morning? Is this too much? Okay. Uh, shamans use swastika. Okay. Uh, have you guys ever, like, just, look, just walking around Seoul, have you seen any swastika symbols? Like in a, such as, like a house or a certain like a shop? Those are fortune tellers' places. And fortune tellers are, used to be, shamans. Okay? Shamans use swastika because when Buddhism was introduced to Korea more than 2,000 years ago, they try to you know, teach Koreans about Buddhism and to have them convert to <coughs> Buddhism, but they failed. Why? Because everyone was a believer in shamanism. And what's shamanism? Shamanism, I'm, we're jumping ahead now, uh, but I'm just giving you a, a taste of what's, what's, what is going to come your way uh, maybe next week. Uh, shamans, they serve as fortune tellers, they heal the sick, and they sell talisman. You know what talisman is? Like amulet. You, if you carry that, you chase away evil spirits, right? So, these monks, early monks, because what they taught Koreans, you know, to meditate, right? To try to reach nirvana. It didn't sell. So the monks started to act like shamans. They started to heal the sick. They, you know, they sort of served as fortune tellers, and they sold amulets. And some monks still do in Korea. So you see, so shamanism and Buddhism became interchangeable. That is why, if you are a, a highest ranked monk, wouldn't you make this, make this demand that all the fortune tellers stop using swastika, right? For their uh, business. But they can't, it's because it is historically rooted. Okay? So, uh, keep that in mind, and let's move on. Uh, Tegu, uh, it means ultimate existence, and <clears throat> it uh, means the ultimate equality and balance, and it also embodies the dual principle of yin and yang. Okay? And, you know, every time I sort of encounter this sort of philosophy or principle of yin and yang, you know, it just uh, makes me think about how wonderful this philosophy is, right? Uh, can anybody tell me what yin and yang is? Interchangeable forces of nature. Anyone else? Continuous cycle of life. Anyone else? Very good. 
negative and positive or the opposite forces, right? You know, existing or coexisting to balance things out. That's also a good one. And my favorite sort of a definition is this. Life comes in many forms of opposites, okay? And the existence of the opposites give more meaning to each other. For example, life is more meaningful because its opposite exists, which is death. Love is so meaningful because what is the opposite of love? Hate or no love. Life without love. Uh, and you can come up with so many sets of opposites, right? Light, dark, uh, sharp, dull, um, fire, water, right? Liquid, solid, right? I mean, uh, practically everything that is important in life comes with a set of opposites. And that is why everything in life is so, so meaningful. Okay? So, don't think that uh, the opposite makes life inconvenient. I mean, it does sometimes, but it does ultimately give more meaning to our experiences. Okay? And what about men? Can women, men... And I think the, the, the existence of the opposite also give wholeness. It makes the existence more complete, right? Think of men. Can men be complete without women? Yes. These young men don't know life. <laughs> okay. Uh, men's existence without women is unimaginable. But can women be complete without men? And that answer is true. <laughs> uh, and this is really true. Um, when men uh, beyond the age of 65, when their wives pass away, and if they don't get remarried within the next five years, their life expectancy is shortened by 40%. Okay? Statistically proven. But when women beyond the age of 65, lose their husbands, what happens? <laughs> they live longer. Okay. So, uh, men's reliance on their wives, much, much bigger than the other way around. Yes? That's a very sensitive question. Did you know that? No. Uh, um, I don't know any statistics on that, okay? But I think, uh, you see, what, what matters is this. Uh, men, by nature, tend to be more selfish, right? Uh, so I think the better question would be, in the gay relationship, the, the partner who, who played the male role would suffer as much as the... the Okay, I'm making. Go ahead. Sorry. Huh? Just sorry. Oh, I'm entering a very dangerous territory. So let me not uh, speak any further about that. Any other questions? Okay, let's move on. Uh, so the thank you. I have some uh, visual images. Um, it's a really beautiful picture, right? And I do hope uh, you get you visit uh, a temple, and there's uh, one in downtown Seoul, Chogesa, and you know it's a good experience. Uh, and every time, anytime you go there. You'll see a lot of Koreans like praying. Okay. Yeah, Korean airline. Thank you. And Pepsi.
Do you know that the founder of uh, Pepsi was really into uh, Buddhism? Just kidding. <laughs> The, there is this remarkable resemblance. You you agree, right? So that's why I think some Korean netizens threatened to sue Pepsi. So they changed the lo logo to this now. Okay, if this is their present uh, Pepsi logo. But um, if you drink too much of this, what happens? You get fat. And really, Pepsi or any kind of soda. Not, nothing good in, good for you, right? Um, so you get <laughs> you get that like that. Example number two: uh, Korean flag, and um, it does contain this uh, balancing philosophies of yin and yang, and um, yang yin uh, and these bars also have meanings. I won't get to that. Just other than to mention how I have this traumatic ex experience when I was little. Because you have to memorize how each of these bars <laughs> look like. Uh, and uh, if you don't memorize, you know, you, your exam score is not as high as you'd like it to be. Anyway, some more ima uh, visual images. And. Uh, <coughs> Koreans love their flags, as you would uh, for your own uh, country's flag. Uh, I, my love for the Korean flag, um, I rented a, a small uh, like arena uh, to stack up books. Personally did this. Is that a joke or not? Very good. You guys are sharp. Not the best, uh, you know, painter. Uh, but I'm telling you really a true story of this one. Uh, as you can see, this happened uh, in 2000, during 2002 FIFA World Cup. This flag still holds the Guinness record as the world's biggest flag. Okay? But this, this is also a trauma for me because I paid $500 for this game. Guess what happened? I was stuck right in there for the whole duration of the game. Okay? Um, and I couldn't move. Nobody moved. And the flag was proudly displayed for the whole duration of the game. Alright? Amazing, eh? Example number three. And See, I told you that um, cultural symbols don't have to be unique to any given culture. They're shared. And I think we mentioned uh, the crescent moon, which is the most important cultural symbol of any country that, is, that has uh, predominantly a Muslim population, right? So take a Chinese in origin, but it's more important in Korea, right? That is why it's in our flag. Now. This third example, we call it Sam Tegu. So Sam meaning three. Tegu, Tegu, right? So um, let me ask, are there any Chinese students? OK. Is this, did you see this in China? No. OK. So I wanted to confirm once again. So this is uniquely Korean, all right? So, uh, and it's a wonderful symbol, would to say. Uh, so, <clears throat> it uh, represents, you know, the blue or white, no, blue sky, red earth, white or yellow human being. And, uh, and it, uh, like Tegu, some Tegu symbolizes the universe, uh, that there is no beginning or end. Uh, it marks an infinity. Earth is as a, is a whole in itself, while a part of each other. Excuse me, maybe the put this in the side of me. Uh, okay, now 
Does anybody, can anybody tell me where you have seen this in public? Oh, in fans. But I'm talking about public places. Okay. Yes. It's often seen in drums. Oh, yes. I'm talking about public places that are frequented by millions of people every day. You spoke too fast, because I was going to say, Maxim Coffee. <laughs> uh, that is true. I'll uh, show you. Uh, this is... Whew. Yeah, this is something that you'll see in a fan, right? Drum? This, uh, I don't know if this is tr still true, uh, but uh, this, at least for some, while, some time, was a, a logo of the Korean government, okay? So, um, really nice dynamic Korea, okay? But um, I don't think anybody would like Korea being a dynamite. Uh, dynamic Korea, and for the 1988 Olympics, you see how the, the official sort of a logo featured some pictures, right? And you see all the transfer points are marked with... So this is slightly different from what you said, right? Oh, this was what you were talking about. Very good. I'll bring you a cup of coffee next time. Okay? So how many of you knew this? That all of the transfer points were marked with this very culturally significant symbol? Okay. Most, mostly <laughs> foreigners. So Korean students, I guess, sort of took it for granted, right? Now you know what it symbolizes, okay? That it is part of Taegum, and that it is uniquely Korean, that you see every day, if you do take subway to school, right? Example number four, uh, Mugunghwa, uh, Rose of Sharon. Now, can anybody tell me why this flower was chosen? As the national flower. Yes. It does only I think the fact that it has an English name, I think, shows that, it, that it's not uniquely Korean uh, flower. But I think that's a good guess, right? In many countries where they have a, like a national animal as a mascot uh, or flower, they typically tend to choose something that is that exists only in their country, right? But I believe this is not the case here. Yes? Very good. I don't know about multipl multiplication, but uh, it's very uh, re resilient. It's a, hard, it's a flower that, is, that withstands many uh, sort of uh, let me just show you here. Uh, visually, this is what it looks like. And uh, this is Rose of Sharon. Look at, look, this, your, this is a, a, like a coat of arms, right? Um, and uh, there you go. The name itself, right? Mugum, meaning immortality. Okay? And um, the Rose of Sharon. It's uh, believed to be very tenacious, uh, resilient, and able to withstand both blight and insects. Blight is like a skin cancer of flowers, so it's a very strong flower. So it sort of uh, signifies how, you know, Korean culture, which um, again has been sort of invaded, has been uh, suppressed. Uh, throughout its history, was still able to maintain its, uh, you know, its uniqueness, and was able to persevere. Right. So that's why this uh, flower uh, became uh, the national flower. Right. 
Can anybody tell me uh, about your own country's national flower and why it was chosen? If you have a, an interesting example. Not as interesting as uh, Rose of Sharon? Or do you know what your national flower is? No? <laughs> uh, I don't know, actually, I don't know if every country does have a national flower, but yes. And you're from? France. And any. <laughs> but one thing I could side with him is how with the establishment of the Republic it did try to eliminate every vestige of the monarchy right? um, <coughs> anyway you guys have a little talk after class and let me know if uh, you Come to a conclusion. Okay, example number four. I forgot to bring the, I mean, I have some of these. Uh, my old TA gave them to me because the ones she had expired. <laughs> so uh, I'll, if I don't forget, I'll bring them uh, next class and I'll show you what it really looks like, the actual size and everything. So. As you know or agree, every culture has some kind of a, a talisman, right? Uh, what, what, what are some of the best known uh, examples in the West? Anyone else? Or, I mean, you could just talk about your own culture's talisman. Something you carry for protection and for good luck. Or do you have anything that, that you carry as a, as a form of like protection from evil or as a, a, as a good luck wish? Yes. Okay, I think I shouldn't say country, but you know, maybe nothing Canadian in origin, but people who live in Canada who have may have brought something from their own country, right? Uh, or you know, native uh, Canadians, they have uh, something to that effect, like totem pole, right? So. Um, Anything from your own culture or something that you carry around? Yes. I'm uh, Michael. I'm Australian, but like my family is Chinese. Mm -hmm. During Chinese New Year's, for example, it's like we would hang this like red Chinese cards. I don't know what it means, but like we would hang on the door and we would hang upside down. Mm -hmm. So apparently, we didn't know that. Good luck. It's like also to put it down and fly back. Good. But anyone carrying anything? Or you're not supposed to show it? <laughs> yes. Some religions, I think, in China, if you believe in Buddha, is uh, if uh, you can carry something made um, made in the shape of a Buddha. Oh, uh, in jade, of, with jade, Buddha. yeah, with Not jade, like what I was carrying. This uh, is from my grandmother. 
So like if you're in a temple, the uh, the temple will do some uh, like blessings on this the, on this material thing to carry a spirit, and they believe that that will bring you good luck and um, get away from the evil spirits. Mm, thank you. You see, you can't see this, but I do wear a necklace uh, with a cross. Um, although I'm not practicing Christian, my aunt was uh, a nun, sister. And uh, she gave me this uh, necklace, telling me to wear it all the time, as sort of a protection. Okay? Uh, and I'm still wearing it. Uh, so something that you get from someone you uh, love dearly, I think you sort of have this attachment to that kind of thing, and you sort of you know wear it, right? Um, anyway, uh, this I don't know how many people actually carry this uh, anymore, but uh, for a long time people did carry this uh, as a, again. Uh, wish to go for good luck and protection from evil spirits. And as you can see, each <coughs> sheet has a, a wish. Okay? So, so this is just an example. So if you go to a different uh, fortune teller, you'd get a different uh, sort of a design or differently inscripted uh, sort of sheet. Okay? But at least for this one, uh, for prosperity or no, prosperity, So this is for marital harmony, okay? And this is for prosperity. And for getting a job, and for conception, okay? So for couples are like able to uh, cons like have, a, have babies, carry them around. Uh, and this one, both for acing the exam. So before the, let's say, Korean SAT, you, you know, your parent would get this and have uh, the student carry this, right? Uh, for those of you who don't know Chinese, this is king, okay? Chinese uh, character for king. And I have it in my bicep. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Uh, same thing. I'm just going to show you just examples, right? This is something that you hang on the wall, and these are all different sort of uh, shaped uh, different shaped designs, right? And this is really an interesting example. A pair of jeans, okay? But uh, there it says admission, 2006, okay? So, um, and here, P meaning pass, X exam. So pass exam 2006, okay? So, uh, and during the college entrance exam time uh, in Korean SAT, uh, <coughs> parents and friends buy each other gifts okay, that uh, in Korean expressions uh, to, to pass uh, something in Korean, Korean verb is putta, right? Uh, so you buy the person sticky candy because it sticks, right? Or, uh, you know, to write, a, write it, to, to ace the exam is to see clearly, right? The questions. So they would uh, buy them what? Uh, I'll explain further when that appropriate slide comes up, okay? Uh, and these uh, are for Buddhists, okay? Uh, this monk uh, is sort of a legendary figure. His name is Dharma, 
and he supposedly brings good luck. So if you visit a Buddhist home, chances are you'll see a, a frame featuring this guy hanging on the wall. Okay? Um, I have a very devoted Buddhist friend, uh, and when I invited him to my house for a house, what's the name of the sort of the party when you host housewarming, not party, but housewarming dinner, and his gift for me was this huge frame uh, featuring this guy, and I threw it out. Uh, <laughs> as a non-Buddhist. Um, And I call this the mother of all talismans because it features shamanistic wishes and Buddhist, right? So look how many wishes there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Twelve times by nine, what, what do you get? 108. Eight. The, so there are 108 wishes. Wouldn't that cover practically every wish you have? Yes or no? Money. Good job. Uh, good. <laughs> good lover. <laughs> uh, I think whatever. It's all there. Okay. So, if anybody can get this. Please get one for me too. Would anybody be interested in getting this? Check out Insadon. And uh, if you really want to buy this, I'll print it out so that you could carry around asking for the exact copy. There's got to be something that exists that looks like this, right? So you can see me after class if you're interested. I'll print it out for you. Now this is, uh, it looks big, but <clears throat> this is pure gold. And it's very thin, and it's in the size of business card. So same thing, you carry it around uh, to protect yourself from evil spirits and uh, for good luck, okay? And remember the ones I showed you earlier, the, the sheets? You fold those, into the shape of a business card. Okay? So they're not, when you unfold, it's uh, as big as a postcard. Okay? But you fold it uh, into, again, the size of a, a business card. And the uh, keychain, and as an example, that, uh, that in practically every culture, there is uh, some type of, a, of an amulet, uh, amulet, and this is Japanese. Uh, cross, uh, I mean, it's, I don't, I don't know if uh, it still has that sort of meaning as in, the, in the same degree of importance as before, but uh, it was not only a symbol that showed that the bearer was a Christian, at the same time, uh, it was a, a defense against the demons. And rabbit's foot. I mean, in the old days, they were real rabbit's foot, but today, because of animal rights uh, uh, complaints, uh, they're fake, from what I hear. Two dollar bills. Um, but in, if you're interested in getting this, you just go to any bank in Korea and ask for it. They always have a few. Why? For them, it's a nuisance, right? Because they you don't know, like to just keep the ones that are more commonly circulated, like one dollar bill and so on. But So again, if you are interested in getting those, just tell them and they'll give them to you, chances are. Uh, lucky coin, lucky penny. Does anybody know why there is this, I mean there's so many being circulated, why, is it, is it, why are these considered lucky pennies? Yes. I don't know why it started, but if there's a pen on the ground, uh, that's lucky somehow. Mm. 
So, this is another thing. Look into it. And if you find a really good reason, let me know. Okay? And four leaf, four leaf clover, right? It comes in every 10,000. But I don't know if this is true, because sometimes I look down on the ground, and there are like so many <laughs> four leaf clovers. Uh, so maybe four leaf clover is unique, hard to find in the West, but in Korea. <laughs> So many, okay? Um, example number six, moving on. Uh, turtle. Uh, while the dragon was considered the ruler of all animals, the turtle ruled over the insects, and because turtles live longer than other animals, they symbolize longevity, okay? And also, people also believe that turtles have the power to predict the future, and fortune tellers use the shape of a turtle's shell to foresee, forecast the future. And these are some uh, visual images. So if you visit uh, like a royal palace, see what you find as like the uh, statues, statues. And uh, when you wanna give a gift to your aging parents, and you wish them, you know, long life, this is what you give, okay? Uh, this is pure gold. And this is true in China too, right? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Number seven. So I do hope you visit uh, again Korean temple because that's that's where you see sort of a living tradition, right? Uh, although when it comes to Korean mindset, I think Buddhism, as, as the book says, the Buddhism was not able to really leave a lasting impact. But at least in terms of arts uh, and in, in, in religion. It, does uh, have a very uh, strong impact. So, since fish does not close its eyes when it sleeps, right? Uh, or even when it dies, uh, in, in Buddhism, uh, it came to represent diligent self-discipline. And where do you see this? If you go to uh, any temple, uh, at the sort of a center ground, you see this wooden fish, okay? And at certain times, monks come out and they uh, beat this wooden fish as if it is a drum, okay? Uh, what, why they do that, I'm not quite sure. And even for this one, if you find the reason why they do that, write to me, okay? And there are many, many examples. Diligent self-discipline. Example number eight. Oh, before I forget. Um, you know the, the book that was just published? Um, if you find any mistakes, or areas that need to need corrections, please let me know. And it will be of uh, tremendous help. Uh, tiger represents vigor, courage, dignity, fierceness, and chivalry. And um, so tigers were seen as brave, dignified, and cruel on the, on the one hand, yet you know, respected as a symbol of good luck and protection from disease. Okay? So tigers in dreams represent a sign to take a public position and the embroidered breast patches on the court attire of military officials included tigers and leopards. So 
I actually try to find uh, visual images of this. So if anybody could find from old court attire, if you could find this, uh, again, the attire featuring tiger or leopards, please uh, share with me. And these are all old classic paintings of tigers. And uh, these are really price priceless uh, paintings. And if you ever wondered, man, these drawings are really not that artistic. And I could easily tell you that my son could draw better than this. So this shows you how, in the old days, art was looked down on, right? Uh, unlike the West, uh, artists in, in, in Korea, whether they were musicians or painters, they were, you know, much lower below in status than, let's say, Yangman, right? So that's why we don't really have a... Uh, well, let me stop there. Um, and this is the peninsula in the shape of the type. Isn't this a beautiful picture? And this, you know what this is? Tiger poo. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Jeju Island. All right. And for foreign students, if you're uh, planning to visit anywhere, make sure you visit Jeju Do, Jeju Island, because it's so exotic. You, 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 you go. Can really, can this really be part of Korea? That's how different it is. Yeah? Um, and Tiger was the mascot of the 1988 Olympics. And our beloved university's uh, you know, logos, we have many logos, but one of them, one of the most well-known uh, sort of logos features the Tiger. Isn't this really a wonderful uh, logo or emblem? Uh, example number nine is lotus, uh, water lily, and it represents creation, birth. A Buddhist story tells that the lotus came from the belly of a god who slept on the water. Uh, for this reason, it symbolizes birth and creation, and even though it grows in muddy and dirty water, its beauty is not tarnished. And I think this is a really important point. Uh, one key characteristic, characteristic of lotus is that they produce flowers and fruits at the same time. Unlike other plants that bear fruits only after they, their flowers bloom. So that's why this symbolizes having offspring consecutively. Okay? And these are some uh, visual images. And if you visit a temple, I think you need, really need to be observant as to what you can find. And you may go, ah, that's what I saw during lecture. Sorry I didn't do the one minute break, huh? We just got five minutes to go, so next time. If um, you want to remind me, we'll do it like that. <laughs> okay. This will be the last uh, symbol that we look at today. And uh, in English, it's called double he. Okay? Happiness for husband and wife. And I think Koreans, they probably have seen this uh, at weddings or even at home. Uh, so this symbol expresses wish, wishes for husband and wife to enjoy a happy marriage. Okay? And I'll do what I can do to upload uh, lecture notes on Blackboard, uh, but it will not be the same as what you see here. It will be much abbreviated. 
Stuff here, and uh, I'll see you uh, on Thursday. <laughs>